Justine here, the Homearchy channel. I'm going to do a series of videos called Rainbow Seditionists from the perspective of homosexual and bisexual people who are not happy with LGBTQ, two-spirit, questioning, intersex, asexual, demisexual, blah, 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 blah. Blah. Identity politics. My population is growing because they have become extremist and silly and confusing. And we're not happy about things like pedos infiltrating drag queen story hour, where there are video clips of drag queens twerking in front of five year old children which was then infiltrated in several locations by pedophiles, including one judge. And we're not happy about the fact that there are drag kids who are sashaying down catwalks with adults throwing dollar bills at them. See, it's not just the gender stuff we don't like because drag is not trans, it's gay. But we're also not happy about the eradication of sex-based rights for women and the eradication of the definition of homosexuality in favor of gender identity. We're not happy with dozens of genders and bi, pan, queer teachers looking with pouty lips, with come hither looks in their videos on TikTok, talking about queering their classrooms. Uh, we're not happy about the McCarthyism around complaining about any of this stuff in the LGBTQ plus 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 queer blah 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 community, which isn't really a community. It's really a term for a certain political agenda. I think today I'm, I really wanted to talk about a situation. It's a bittersweet situation for me. Uh, a little bit of uh, Schoedenfraude and a little bit of sympathy for a pile honor who got piled on in the queer community. Not that I like that word. I used to not mind it, but I don't like it now. So I want to talk about Lauren Hoff. Lauren Hoff is a lesbian writer uh, she wrote a book called Leaving Isn't the Hardest Thing. It's a well-reviewed book, and maybe I would want to read it. And I'll just uh, give you a little description of it. As an adult, Lauren Hoff has had many identities. An airman in the U.S. Air Force, a cable guy, a bouncer at a gay club. As a child, however, she had none. Growing up as a member of the infamous cult, The Children of God. Hoff had her own self robbed from her. The cult took all of her all over the globe, to Germany, Japan, Texas, Chile, but it wasn't until she finally left for good that Lauren understood she could have a life beyond the quote-unquote the family. That was another name for the children of God. And this seems to be a well-reviewed book. Uh, looks interesting. I am familiar with the children of God cult because I am completely fascinated by cults. I have watched every documentary I could find on cults. I had a family member who was a loved one who was sucked into a cult and it wasn't the worst cult, but it, it was bad. I don't understand people getting sucked into cults. Uh, this was not Lauren's fault because her parents were in this cult and she was in the cult as a child. And, but I don't understand why people get sucked in the cults. It's this dynamic of a malignant narcissist controlling people, manipulating their emotions and their desire for a utopia or a better world is very obvious to me, um, but not to other people. And they really get taken in and exploited. And it's unfortunate. This cult, like many cults, practiced child sexual abuse and excused it and validated it. And eventually they renounced that behavior, but it sounds like it's still continued. Just more on the DL. The leader of it, uh, his name was David Berg. 
this is a quote from Learn Religions about uh, some of the weird stuff that he would do. Berg began to encourage the female members of COG to practice what he called flirty fishing, based upon Jesus' Jesus's injunction in Matthew 4.19, quote, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Berg instructed his female followers to go to bars, pick up men, and seduce them into converting and joining children of God. In a 1979 annual report, Berg stated that his COG evangelists had witnessed to over a quarter of a million souls, loved over 25,000 of them, and won about 19,000 to the Lord through, I don't know, bar pick pickups and hookups? It's probably a good recruitment tool. Not that I think it's cool that the women were um, manipulated into that. But yeah, this guy in the 60s, started this Christian cult, this Christian hippie cult, and he sucked in hippie young people from the streets of uh, Southern California to sort of recruit and then give their lives over and possessions over in service to the cult, like lots of them. So Lauren Hoff was in this cult, and she wrote about it and her other experiences in this book. She was up for a Lambda Liter Literary Award. These Awards can help authors, fringe authors, and this is uh, something that she stated about this, this award. The Lambda Prize exists because when someone like me, which is to say a queer person, manages to publish a book with queer themes, those books are often ignored by mainstream prize committees. So she wrote this on her substack. Prizes get media attention, prizes create name recognition, and bring in new readers. Prizes sell books. Prizes like the Lambda also come with a check, so it's a monetary prize. So, guess what? Uh, Lauren was canceled, and guess why? Trans. That's going to be at the top of the list. There's lots of ways somebody can get canceled, but if it's queer, it's probably trans. It's not unusual for trans activists to orchestrate pylons against people. There's a very, 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 very long list of people who have been subjected to trans activist pylons, even for the most minor transgressions of trans ideology. So I want to make it clear that I am not dissing people who have serious gender issues, but this is about an ideology and a movement and a way of being. And the insanity of identity politics on the left in general and in the queer community is the result of a lot of things. It is far left-wing academic identity politics that have taken over everything. They're very intolerant. It is social media. It is the fact that Gen X people did a horrible job raising their children. And you can see this in other types of studies and research that they're very emotionally dysregulated and self-centered. It's definitely harming a lot of people. She was canceled because of a very ridiculous reason. Lauren Hoff defended a book by a friend of hers. That's a good thing to do. It was written by Sandra Newman, and the name of the book is The Men. So Hoff defended this book about a world where men, or people with XY chromosomes leave the planet, and while the planet is more peaceful, all the women want to do is get them back. And I find that premise interesting. Sounds like an interesting book. But, of course, of course, trans ideologues were upset about this book. So this is from Reason Magazine, so I'm going to read this. The premise ran afoul of certain transgender Twitter activists. I'm sure it wasn't just Twitter. Since everyone with a Y chromosome is a category that includes not just men, but also transgender women. And the people left behind would not just be women, but also transgender men. Indeed, one such activist described Newman's plotting as transphobia and trans misogyny. Here is what Hoff had to say. I read the book 
Sandra Newman sent it to me in an early form, and I gave her a few notes, like we do for one another. I am not transgender, and neither is Sandra. Sandra is non-binary. Wow. Sorry, that's my additional comments. That's not in her original quote. And yes, it was sarcastic. I do not think non-binary identities are anything that's particularly of interest or should be forced on other people to acknowledge, but increasingly is. Anyway, I'll finish the quote. But we discussed how to make the book recognize the reality of transgender people. See, very concerned. That's not good enough people though. Continuing. Other books that started from this premise, All the Men Disappear, have erased the existence of trans people. And it was important to her not to do that, to be as sensitive as possible. So when I saw people assuming that simple idea was the entirety of the plot, I told them to read the book before assuming the worst. For this, I was labeled a turf. I'm not a fucking turf. No reasonable person could think I'm a turf. It's actually quite easy to find out whether or not I'm a turf. All you have to do is ask me or spend two minutes scrolling my Twitter timeline. Sandra Newman isn't a turf either, something that can easily be discovered by the same methods. So she lost her uh, Lambda Literary Award because of this. I would like to talk about two things. I want to talk about Jesse Singal and Hoff's use of the word turf. So from Hoff's statement, I'm not a fucking turf. Um, it sounds like Hoff has contempt for turfs. She doesn't like turfs. They're fucking turfs. They're not just turfs. They're fucking turfs. And she kind of, I can kind of hear it, her spitting it out of her mouth. Fucking turf. Fucking turf. So she certainly wants to distance herself from turfs. And so I just want to remind people when fucking turf rolls off Hoff's high art literary tongue, that a turf is not really just somebody that wants to maintain sex segregated spaces in law that will exclude uh, trans identified male people. But to be a turf, it also means that you're a lesbian that doesn't want sexual intercourse with a lady penis. That's enough to be a fucking turf in the queer family. And it's also enough to be a fucking turf, to be a college student who makes vulva cupcakes for your female positive events, who gets rape and death threats and told that you're a fucking bitch. So that's a turf too. So this is all under the turf umbrella, the fucking turf umbrella that Hoff is uh, employing here. And this canceling of her is a bit of schadenfreude and kind of also, I feel sorry for her too, because she was in this cult and has lost this award. So I have mixed feelings about this. So yes, a 16 year old lesbian on Tumblr will get lots of hate messages for not wanting to fillet a lady cock. That's a fucking turf. It's just be clear what a fucking turf is. So, uh, I think I'm going to take a sip of beer at this point because I'm trying to entertain myself here because this is, uh, it's, uh, weird and, but it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny and it's ironic and not surprising that she's getting canceled. So we've talked about what a fucking turf is. So now let's talk about Jesse Singel. So I'm very familiar with the research on pediatric medical transition and childhood gender dysphoria, and I've been researching it since 2015. So I know sort of what the real discourse is, what the fake discourse is, what the studies say, what the arguments are, where the conflicts are, where the dangers are, where the positive studies are, where the negative studies are, and pretty familiar with this. And Jesse Singal has actually done very ethical 
journalism. And he doesn't make everybody happy. The trans activists hate him because he raises some legitimate uh, concerns about dangers of over-medicalizing young people. But he's also not liked by like some radical feminists because he doesn't go far enough. He respects pronouns. He doesn't think it's pediatric transition should be illegalized. He recognizes the seriousness of some childhood gender dysphoria. So his reporting has been pretty legitimate. But guess what? Lauren Hoff has participated in extremely unethical smear campaigns against Jesse Sinkle. And he has been reporting on this issue since 2000. 16. And his reporting has recently been very vindicated by even WPATH members, not all of them, because it's a very sort of cult-like organization posing as uh, a medical advisory standards of care organization. But even some WPATH members have acknowledged that puberty blockers stunt general development and probably destroy sexual function. They make the bottom surgeries hard harder later they sterilize and are impact bone health. And they also probably are going to trans and proto-gay kids too, which is my issue. So even now, trans people who are part of WPATH are acknowledging some of the concerns that he's raised. The extent of the smear campaign against Jesse Single uh, was not only attacking the legitimacy of his work, but also accusing him of a creepy fascination with trans women, saying, women, I don't, I don't believe this. I'm just, I mean that in air quotes. I adhere to biological reality due to the damage this ideology is doing. So I'm on the uh, correct pronoun usage train that I used to oppose. Anyway, quote, women, trans women, uh, so there were all these accusations that he made uh, creepy comments and innuendo to all these trans women. And the insinuation is, is he's like a gamp, which is a, a, a oh God, I can't even say it, but it's somebody who has a sexual fascination with MTFs. And so all of this was very unhinged and pretty much the MO of trans activists. They have done smear campaigns against Al Strager, Michael Bailey, Ray Blanchard, Kathleen Stock, Julie Bindle, um, a huge long list. This is what they do. And it's not just like fringe Twitter people. It's actually the, the heads of the trans activist movement, which is why this isn't just not picking. This is what the movement is. Julia Serrano will engage in this behavior. Some of the um, top names in trans activism. Um, it still follows him. Journalists attack Jesse Single. Uh, they call him a transphobe. They say he's got a creepy sexual fasc fascination with trans women or insinuate that. And he could sue all these people, but of course, he's not going to do that. He's a pretty laid back guy. Well, guess what? Our Lauren Hoff, our canceled for transphobia Lauren Hoff, participated in this pylon. So what she did... This is from a Colette article that lists sort of all these unethical accusations and smear campaigns these gender identity activists engaged in. So this is from the uh, Colette article. Author Lauren Hoff claimed an anonymous trans friend had been driven off Twitter by singles direct messages. Hoff offered no evidence despite the fact this would have been precisely the sort of interaction that, if it had actually taken place, could easily be documented with screenshots, much like all other claims which similarly involve text messages or other retrievable digital artifacts. So I actually recently asked Hoff if she could produce evidence of this sexually sort of harassed, or maybe harassed in another manner, driven off Twitter trans person that was in her dams. And I was pretty accusatory. I, I was like, can you produce this? Because if you made this up, that's evil. And I'm, I'm pretty clear about that. Like I have strong opinions, but people need to base 
even their most fiery rhetoric in at least something that's somewhat fact-based, even if you're putting your own spin on it. And some kind of made-up accusation is um, a, a condemned sin in every religion and looked down upon in every culture uh, because smearing people around lies is it's evil. So I called it evil, asked her to produce evidence, and then put in a bunch of articles that validate Jesse Singel's reporting about medical transition, about um, injuries from puberty blockers, about WPATH members expressing concerns about all these teenage girls that want to transition, all of these things that he's been talking about that people tried to destroy his reputation for, including Hoff. So I was blocked. Um, I mean, it was a little trolly, but legitimate trolling. She's also gone after J.K. Rowling for talking about trans extremism. J.K. Rowling is, everyone's trying to cancel her. She mostly is just sticking up for the necessity of sex-based rights in prisons and rape crisis centers, uh, certain areas where you don't necessarily want heterosexual trans-identified males, which most of them are sexually attracted to women necessarily in these sex-segregated spaces that are trying to address a certain issue where the women can't wait. So there's, of course, a huge effort to paint her as evil and causing trans people to kill themselves and the usual. Hoff has participated in this as well. For example, uh, J.K. Rowling actually circulated an article by a friend of mine named Julia Robertson. And this article, uh, anonymous letter from a terrified lesbian. And this article was pretty much about this um, cancel culture. I don't like saying cancel culture because it's, it's a cute phrase for um, a political, abusive, um, punishing sort of cult ideology, authoritarian ide ideology. And so this article was going over um, lesbians who don't buy into all of this stuff, how they're afraid to talk about their sexuality. They're afraid to say they don't want to have sex with dysphoric males. They are afraid to raise concerns about over-medicalized gay and lesbian youth, which is a real issue. That's even demonstrated in psychology research on gender dysphoria in childhood. Hoff had some um, nasty, snarky comments on social media. Uh, so to Julia Robertson, Hoff said, the saddest thing about this essay is the content is so goddamn bad. So blah, 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 blah. And then dot, dot, dot. And trans women are women. So this was directed at JK Rowling. So good, good social justice worrying there, Hoff. Um, too bad that your prize money and reputation and accolades have now been taken away by the very thing that Julia Robertson was talking about in this article that you trashed gleefully. Um, another thing about J.K. Rowling, the stupidest thing about J.K. Rowling, billionaire, going off today, is she thinks she's brave for speaking out against oppression. And it's the whitest goddamn thing. God, I love it when people bolster their intellectual discourse and debate with um, racialized bullshit. But anyway, sorry, I was going to try not to swear on my uh, videos because I swear a lot in real life. So I want to mix it up, try to find other words. So this is a quote from Lauren Substack. I'm a queer woman and I was silenced most of my life. I found my voice, but if my nomination is being withdrawn for using it, what the fuck is the point of Lambda Literary? Lauren, are you crying white woman tears? Just like J.K. Rowling. Is that what you're doing? Are you crying your white woman tears? Um, <laughs> seriously, I, I don't want to trash this person because she grew up in an abuse dynamic. Um, and I'm going to give a quote about that too. So here's what she said about growing up in this children of God cult. 
I had problems with the teachings pretty early on, but I couldn't express those, she says. Probably the earliest thing I learned is just keep your mouth shut. And I couldn't, which was a problem. I've got some other quotes here of her experience, but there was sexual abuse going on in this cult. And she also felt like the Air Force was kind of a cult dynamic with all of its sort of patriotism and displays of honor. And I find that that's interesting. But Hoff, you're, you're still in a cult. You're in the queer cult. You're in the Twawist cult, the trans women or women cult the Tuolist cult. And you better STF you if you want a career. You better not sin. You better not commit blasphemy. You better uh, do good penance when you offend the gender spirit. You must always put the gender spirit first in all language, in all art, in all thought. You must not def defend friends against the honor of the gender spirit and you must kneel, you must obey and you must tell lesbian teenagers that they're not allowed to complain if they get rape and death threats on Tumblr, if they don't want to fillet lady penile erections. This is what Lauren Hoff had to say about sort of the literary world, which is pretty terrible, especially young adult literature. Uh, but just the literary world and somebody only as powerful as J.K. Rowling can really withstand the tirade of uh, social justice identity politics now called wokeness. And I don't like the woke term because it used to be a good term for black people needing to stay aware about how they could be endangered or they were being discriminated against. But it's just the term people are using. I like to c call it quokemism because it's it's all far left-wing queer theory, critical race theory, and um, kind of dysfunctional feminism. So anyway, uh, this is what Hoff had to say. If you see another author being piled on on this fucking website yet again, and you choose to join in for a few likes and a little clout, you're a piece of shit. And dumb as fuck if you think it can't, won't happen to you. Has Hoff apologized to Jesse Single? Doubt it. Um, <laughs> here was the tweet she circulated when the incident happened. I have a friend, a trans man, who was driven off Twitter by that fucker, repeatedly DMing him questions about whether he was confused about transitioning. Lauren. Really, Lauren. Where's the evidence of this or any other evidence that Jesse Singal has done anything like this or anything else he's been accused of? I'm sorry, uh, Hoff, Lauren Hoff, not that she's going to hear this, but I am going to email this to her, send it to her on her contact page. Maybe she'll listen to it. I feel bad for you, but you're, you're in another cult now. You really are. So I'm going to cut in more detail about how trans activism has become cult-like. There are good reasons to compare trans activism to an unhealthy cult dynamic. A lot of people are comparing lots of ideologies and groups to cults. It makes sense in a lot of ways because after the rise of rationalism and more atheism, I think a lot of people thought there would be a more rational world. And I think what we're discovering is that even when you erase God, you don't really get rid of the fundamentalism impulse and the idea to control people to create what you think is the closest thing to utopia on earth, to control people into behaving the way that you want them to behave. So political ideologies can work this way. We've seen some pyramid scheme, cults, and some self-help cults. So you can have cults without God. And some of the specifics that legitimize comparing trans activism to a cult, and I'm making it clear, I'm not talking about people with gender dysphoria. I'm talking about a movement and an ideology. I am not attacking individual people who have 
certain life struggles. So some of those comparisons are that trans ideology has a fantastical belief system in a gender spirit and it's a non-falsifiable belief system but you must believe it and you must respect somebody's declared subjective reality and that even means eradicating any kind of laws policing that so a male can just identify as a woman with no hormones and no surgery and be placed in a women's prison even if they have raped uh, women and children, which is happening. For real. It has rituals such as coming out, unwrapping of the mastectomy bandage on YouTube, there's lots of those, and the pronoun rituals. If you listen to transition videos, transition is often talked about as a kind of spiritual transformation or a rebirth or a hero's journey. And it's a very powerful ideological movement in the way that some cults have been. It's controlling the medical profession. It's controlling their use of language in ways that make it confusing to talk about biology and medicine. It's controlling tech companies who remove people off of their social media accounts from pretty much what is now the public square who want to talk about conflicts with trans ideology and women's rights and homosexual rights. And it's controlling the government who has recently put out statements about pediatric transition that are not actually accurate. Another way trans activism is cult-like is that in many of these gender spaces, young people are actively encouraged to cut their parents off if they don't affirm their identities, which are often very suddenly announced and often by young people that are struggling with a lot of other mental health issues. It has motivations to cover up sexually creepy things. And for an example, you can look up the Amy Challoner case, and I'm not accusing everybody who has gender dysphoria of some kind of sexual impropriety, but fear of accusations of transphobia causes people to ignore some creepy behavior when those situations arise. So it has a lot of power and it punishes a lot of people for failing to live up to its ideological demands. Back to Lauren Huff. You are going to have to obey this if you want a literary career. So don't step out of line. Um, this isn't necessarily as bad as what was going on in the children of God, although it is in some other ways because actually medical grooming and sexual grooming is very common in these gender identity spaces. And if you try to discuss that reality, even in the most ethical way possible, um, you're, they will come for you to destroy your career and your life. So you have participated in this. I hope at least for your own mentality that mentally you can get out of it to keep your sanity. But I don't think so because here you are a couple weeks later with a good tweet that says something to the effect of things that matter and all it is is a trans flag sticking out of the side of a building so you're still doing good worship um still uh um genuflecting very well to the flag that you should be uh very good pledging allegiance but they are not going to become more forgiving of you so just remember that and make sure that you behave, make sure that you worship properly, make sure that you don't step out of line, make sure that you don't talk about any of the very actually disturbing things that are going on in the LGBTQIA to spirit blah, 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 queer community. So, sorry this happened to you, and I'm glad this happened to you. And it's not going to get better until people start telling the truth. So, okay, I am back from getting another beer. And there are so many crazy things that happened last couple weeks around 
the queer community and identity politics and issues like the Biden administration's promoting some statements on some government entity websites with completely false statements regarding pediatric medical transition. I think I'm going to maybe do a whole video on that. We'll see. And there's a lot of false statements in the document, though, about the sort of legitimacy of the research around transitioning minors and particularly like tweens and younger and the safety of uh, the medical protocols and things like that. I really just wish people would be honest about the dangers of this. They are not, but so be it. Only lawsuits will make them so. And also the don't say gay bills, which really don't, don't say gay. And I think I'm going to, in the description, post some good reviews of that, of what's really going on, because it's really people are afraid of these activist teachers and even some of the official materials that are being introduced into materials for, for very young kids, like fourth grade and under that are pretty sexualized. And then the gender identity issue is definitely going to confuse young children who don't really understand these issues. And there are developmental psychologists who are concerned about that. And I do know from examples of watching this issue that it is confusing children and, and increasing body issues and gender confusion. So people are c concerned about that. And then these activist teachers who are are saying actually really inappropriate things. But I'm not going to go into that now, but I'm going to put some good links into the description about what the don't say gay bills actually do say. Uh, so I don't have to review it because other people are doing that. But right now I'm just going to highlight one video that irritated me. And Okay, so I am going to play this video from Teachers Exposed Twitter account. And there are some crazy queers on this account. Um, in fact, it's embarrassing. Uh, the motivation to indoctrinate, the identity obsession, the inappropriate boundaries, and the complete lack of self-awareness to broadcast this behavior to the world I mean, it's damn funny. Um, and it would be a hell of a lot funnier if it weren't at risk of unraveling the decades of hard work that gay and lesbian people um, really in the modern world, starting from the 1950s, worked to like be out and get fired and, and march and do all of that stuff to try to build public trust that we're not crazy, right? So this would be a lot funnier if uh, she wasn't risking that, all of that, with pretending somehow modern day they thems are experiencing some kind of real oppression. So the quote says that before coming out as non-binary, so former lesbian, now she's non-binary, um, and I'll have more to say about that after this video plays. Um, I would come out to my students. So before um, she October, was non-binary. So she was, she was just gay before non-binary. Somebody coming out to them in case that had never happened to them before. Um, we used it as a way to talk to each other about empathy, about connection, about trust. It ended up being a wonderful experience that I had with my students every single year. So think about what you would have needed when you were in high school or middle school or whatever grade you're teaching. For some students, Definitely not an attention-seeking narcissist who has to pretend that because they're a tomboy that there are more than two sexes and that the entire world has to be stopped from its rotation and forced to acknowledge how very special and unique you are this person. 
just the knowledge that a queer adult exists within their their world is hugely impactful. You don't really have to do anything other than be visible for these students to feel safer and more accepted and more at home when they're on campus. It it does so much for students who don't have that in other places in their lives. For that reason, my classroom is one of the gayest places probably on the planet. Everything is completely covered in rainbows. I've got flags everywhere. I've got queer literature. Because I want every student that I have to know that being... The gayest places, but you're non-binary. You're not gay. You're not a woman. You're not gay. And a lot of us don't want association with this and i don't identify as gay i'm a gay leaning bisexual but why is your class gay if you're non-binary you're a sparkle gender now you have rejected your femaleness you're not a lesbian you're not a woman i don't really believe this but this is what this ideology is you have transformed yourself into something that's very special that's very magical something that transcends the XX chromosomes. It's so important. It's so wondrous that we all have to stop and acknowledge that you are not male and you are not female because you have a baseball hat on your head and it's turned backwards. This is something that used to indicate dykeness, but now you must acknowledge this as an indicator of a very special class of a very special type of person who transcends a billion years worth of evolution. There's something that I am proud of, something that is not um, a secret in my life. It's something that I care about and something that connects me to other people. I'll end by saying that for me, being visibly queer is a non-negotiable. I introduced myself this year with my pronouns immediately. It was the, one of the first things that students learned about me. And I'm going to continue. Pronouns are definitely the most important and first thing that people need to learn about you. And uh, yeah, I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> um, anyone who's going along with this pronoun um, sort of mental illness and obsession you're not really helping young people you're not helping them to be healthier or more comforted in their gender nonconformity you have taken a group of people mostly women and they are they're pretty misogynistic actually it's not misogyny in the way that we normally talk about it which is very overused but it is a type of misogyny and it's sort of the tomboyish it's like the butch lesbian or the tomboyish bisexuals, because a lot of bisexuals are doing this too, uh, who want to send the message that if you don't like pink and have sexual intercourse with men, that you're not a woman, that you're not one of those, you know, you're just not some crappy ass dyke. You're, you're, you're not some lame ass woman that wants a husband and kids. Uh, you're, you're not going to participate in any kind of positive feelings about sort of birth or reproduction or even gender nonconforming lesbians who just like to rock that and are proud of that. You have to disassociate from that. You have to divorce that idea and you have to construct an entire reality that says that you're not female, even though it's a complete lie and it's nothing that you can ever escape. And you, you're going to, force all 230 of your students to participate in in your female inferiority complex and your female self-hatred is really what it is it's not couched that way but that's really what's go what's going on here with the who used to just be lesbians who are now they thems who are now forcing you to engage in their they them pronoun correction ritual and if you really think that all of these pronoun rituals and special acknowledgement about sparkle genders and um, being reverential to all this is progressive and healthy, 
you have your head so far up your anus that we can look at your tonsils and see them giving birth to the top of your head. But when I tell people my name, they still use the wrong one. I say, not girl, and they give me back woman, lady, she. I say, not woman, they say, silly girl. Have you heard of the LGBTQ plus? Well, I am the N in plus. Yes, I'm non-binary, and I'm happy being me. So come at me, you transphobic lip. Sure, it's emotional and sometimes it hurts to not know who you are or not even recognize yourself in the mirror when you look. People with the they them pronouns have so much power. <laughs> Use this. So let's continue. To gently correct 250 people every single day because my identity is a critical part of who I am. Oh, so if so education critical. is something that you want to pursue, um, I recommend being steadfast and being committed Steadfast. to being out as an educator if it's something that you feel safe doing. Um, it has a huge impact for students, and it's something that I've never regret. So, uh, non-binary. Okay. I recommend anybody here go on to non-binary TikTok. Non-binary TikTok. And non-binary YouTube. And go and watch the videos. And come back to me. And I want you to try to pretend that it's not a descent into madness. Into identity disturbance. And body dysmorphic disorder. With all of the uh, top surgery videos. Uh, the non-binary double mastectomy videos. And the pronoun correction videos. Come back and tell me about your gender utopia. So anyway, uh, I'm out of beer. I'm going to go crack another one. And thank you for listening to my musings. Have a good day, night, weekend, weekday. Bye.